Hi there, boys and girls. In this vodcast, what we're going to talk about are different kinds of relationships amongst organisms in an ecosystem. There are three different types of relationships or interactions, actually, that we'll talk about. We're going to talk about symbiotic relationships, competition interactions, and we'll then discuss predator and prey relationships. So the first thing I want to discuss are symbiotic relationships. Now, symbiotic relationships are a product of something that we call symbiosis. And symbiosis, boys and girls, is any relationship between two different species. So these species live closely together, and there are three types of symbiotic relationships. First, we have mutualism. Next, we have commensalism. And then lastly, we have parasitism. Now, each one of these relationships has a different dynamic to it, where parties benefit and don't benefit and so forth. So let's take a closer look at them. First of all, we'll discuss mutualism. If you take a look at the definition of mutualism, mutualism is a symbiotic relationship where both species benefit. Each member of this pair is going to get something out of this relationship. So that's why in the faces above it, you see them smiling really big because both parties are getting something out of it. And one example includes the bees and flowers. If you take a look at this picture here, you'll notice that this bee is crawling around on the flower and it's getting covered in pollen. So as we know, bees always look to flowers to find nectar so they can make their honey and make food. The food is being supplied to the bee by the flower, so that's how the bee benefits, it's getting food. However, you'll notice if you take a close look at this bee, this bee is covered in yellow stuff. And this yellow stuff are tiny grains called pollen. And pollen actually contains male sex cells from the flower. So what will happen is after this bee leaves this flower, it will leave covered in pollen and then land on a different flower. And when that bee lands on a different flower, the pollen grains will get knocked off the bee, fall into the new flower, and then help fertilize the eggs of that flower. So in this example, between the bees and the flowers, the bee gets food, and then the flower is able to reproduce. So that's how these two organisms both benefit from one another. And that's an example of mutualism. Now, a second kind of symbiotic relationship is called commensalism. The definition of commensalism is... A symbiotic relationship where one species benefits and the other is unaffected. So this means that one of these organisms is going to get something out of this relationship. So that's why we have one picture smiling really big here. And the other organism is unaffected. It's neither harmed or helped at all. One example of this type of relationship is the shark and the remora. So if we take a look at this picture here, we have this picture of the shark just cruising along in the ocean, but attached to the bottom of the shark, you have something called a remora. And a remora basically is using the shark to transport itself through the water, so it hitches a ride on the shark. And sometimes, when the shark gets into a feeding frenzy, and all the scraps of flesh and meat from whatever it is that the shark is eating is floating around, the remora will detach itself, scoop some of that stuff up, and then reattach itself to the same shark or maybe a different shark. The remora benefits on getting a ride and getting some food, and the shark doesn't get anything from the remora, but it's not really hurt by the remora either. And then lastly, we have parasitism. One easy way to remember with what happens in parasitism is the fact that most of the word parasite is in this word. And as we know, parasites aren't very good. So by definition, parasitism is a symbiotic relationship where one species benefits and the other one is harmed. In our example here, we have ants and a zombie fungus called cordyceps. And what will happen in this relationship is this. The cordyceps fungus spores will get inside of the ants and then cause the ants to do some weird things. And eventually the ants are going to crawl up a twig, latch onto the twig, and what will happen is those spores will then start to create a brand new fungus inside of the ant and the fungus will actually grow out of the ant, killing the ant and then using the ant for food. As you can see, the zombie fungus, so to speak, benefits because it's getting food and a host to help supply itself with nutrients so it can grow and develop. And unfortunately for the ant, the ant dies. Now let's move on to our other two relationships. So the next interaction we're going to talk about is competition. Competition occurs when two or more organisms seek the same resources at the same time. So some of these resources include things such as food or living space. For example, if we take a look at this picture here, we have two lions battling it out. So perhaps they want to live in the same territory because the territory provides enough food, enough protection, enough water, all the things that it needs to survive. So this living space would be very, very attractive to these two tigers. Well, only one tiger is going to get it. So when two animals are competing for the same things, 
Sometimes the animals will fight it out to establish dominance over the other. Whichever one is the dominant animal will win the territory. So that's what competition is. The last interaction or relationship that we're going to talk about is the predator and prey relationship. This one's pretty cut and dry. The predator is an organism that captures and eats another organism, and the prey is the organism on the other side of that coin. Prey is an organism that is captured and eaten by another organism. In our example here, we have a gazelle running away from a cheetah. So since the cheetah is giving chase, trying to capture the gazelle so it can eat it, the cheetah is the predator in this relationship. And unfortunately for the gazelle, it's the prey because it's the organism that's trying to get eaten by the cheetah. And that wraps up our interactions and relationships amongst organisms in an ecosystem. Thank you for your time, boys and girls.